I'd like to ask everyone to please stand, face the flag, for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the one piece of housekeeping that we have is the adoption of tonight's agenda. I would like to make a motion that we adopt tonight's agenda as written. I'll second. Any discussion? Mrs. Cantos, please call the roll. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Rerica? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. All right, uh, section four is discussion items, and it looks like we have three on our agenda for tonight. 4.01 is the state of school for Williams Avenue Elementary. And I believe we have uh, Principal Miller here. Mm -hmm. yeah. The floor is yours, sir. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. President, members of the board, thank you for giving me a moment to uh, share the news of Williams Elementary's transition back to 2132 Williams Avenue. The address is not up there because I wasn't sure if you knew where it was located. <laughs> but to emphasize that indeed we are back and the staff is thrilled to be there. We certainly want to recognize that the middle school and its staff were such good hosts while Williams was under construction, but we're home now. Hopefully we can get this to work. Click. Just hit return there. Enter. There we go. There we go. Um, at Williams Avenue Elementary, we have much to celebrate. We are driven to collaborate and have a tradition of excellence and community to continue. These are just some of the items I'd like to share with you briefly this evening. The construction and transition, the ODE report card, value added, gap closing, benchmarking, teacher-based teams, and community and parental support. It cannot be stressed enough to you that without the absolute Herculean efforts from our maintenance, teachers, staff, cleaning crew, scarlet and gray, Kramer and Feldman, the general contractor, and also the city. We would not have started uh, on, on time for school or been in our building. However, we did it. We made it. Everyone worked tirelessly to get our school ready for opening day. The first thing people often remark, though, when they walk through the halls is really how much brighter and cleaner the building looks. I wanted to show you a few pictures of the highlights of some of the architectural things. I know this is a little bit smaller. But some of the things that I notice and I appreciate, and I think that many others do as well, when you look down that hallway, the, one of the things that strikes me is all of that natural lighting that just, just comes beaming through, through the hallways and into the classrooms. So I know it was deliberate in terms of those acoustic tiles being angled up so that we would get those, the full window and all the lighting. It, it is just, it's absolutely stunning. Certainly we got windows, we got new windows, we got floors, ceilings, paint, heating and air conditioning, plumbing equipment, systems, all for the betterment of our staff, our students, and our community. There's much more to celebrate as well. The, 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 you'll hear more about this from Ms. Camphouse in terms of the beautification project, which covers the outside of the building, but I don't want to take that away. <laughs> I'll let her present on that. So these are some of the pictures I wanted to show you, some other things that strike me. On the far left there, you see Charlie Watkins, our maintenance person, hoisting a new um, red, white, and blue up there for us. But what you see behind him are those gorgeous windows. I mean, when you walk past Williams, when you drive past Williams, you can't help but see that. That was just an absolute wonderful choice. They're beautiful. In the middle there, you see the bay window in the, in the library. And on the far right, once again, you see just one of our classrooms. Those windows, the acoustic tiles that are going up towards the ceiling to let all that light come in. Floors have been redone. Just absolutely stunning um, and much appreciated. ODE recently published the school report cards and there are several items worthy of note. Williams Avenue met the state standards for academic achievement as well as growth expectations. Not an easy task considering that it was a recovery year uh, after the COVID pandemic. 
you can see that all the grades, and I'm referring to the bottom piece, it's a little hard to see, we're a little far away, it's a little small, but you can see that students, um, um, Williams Avenue, that all grade levels grew students expected, as expected, and some were close to even exceeding. So we talk a lot about growing the green, a year's worth of growth. Williams Avenue staff certainly maintain that for our students. And in some cases you see, I know Ms. Dykes is, is mentioned often, she almost exceeded it. It's quite close to getting, exceeding the standards, which is awesome. I have nothing but respect and kudos for Mr. Gabbard and the Williams Avenue staff. Most notable and certainly worthy of celebration is gap closing for Williams Avenue. Williams Avenue significantly exceeded the state standards for closing educational gaps for all student groups, particularly the most vulnerable. It's hard to see from here, but our economically disadvantaged groups. On, on all cases, you can see students either met or in most cases exceeded the state standards. That, that is worthy to celebrate and to recognize. However, the work is certainly not done and the show must go on. Teachers wasted no time in determining the needs of our students and how to use the resources at hand to provide assistance. Collaboration is most definitely the key to our success and will be the key to our success. You see listed there, uh, the TBT teams are the teacher-based teams that we use at grade levels, building-wide, uh, to really um, to look at data to figure out how we can help students. We talk about benchmarking. You may have heard some of these terms, Ames Web, Map, BATS. These are all um, assessments used to determine where kids are at, where should we start instruction now. Uh, this is a live photo of a, of a working meeting with our title teachers and a couple of our second grade teachers. Uh, they work tirelessly, tirelessly together to really coordinate how they can provide those services to students on top of the general uh, curriculum instruction that they're getting. So we're excited about how much further that we can take our students this year. Now I've been around long enough to see and now know firsthand the tradition and excellence uh, of excellence and community at Williams Avenue Elementary. Norwood Grace United Methodist Church stepped up once again as a community sponsor and a resource. Our district and Xavier University is partnering together this year to provide free tutoring to elementary students after school. Um, and last and not least for sure is our Williams Avenue Elementary PTA and the parents. The involvement is absolutely off the charts and we would not be as successful as we are without them. And for that, I am absolutely grateful. These are just a few pictures, the top ones are some sidewalk chalk uh, encouragement from the PTA for the first day of school for our students. Bottom left is Grandparents Day, which I can flip over and show you a couple more pictures. I had to go up on the roof to get the number of grandparents that were there. I was just, it was awesome. Uh, the bottom left, we had Community Helpers Week uh, last week for our younger folks working with MP, uh, Norwood Police, Norwood Fire. Um, Bottom right with the PTA, the messages they had welcoming students to school. Top right, again, we have a, a just a classroom. Floor is gorgeous. The lighting, uh, the new technology for students, it's just spectacular. But I ask myself often, why? Why celebrate, collaborate, and continue with this tradition? And I think of this young lady, first day of school, Miss Amira Shryrock was with her younger brother, older brother, I'm sorry, on his first day of school. And she, she's there every day after school with her mom to pick her brother up from school, first grade. And I think of her and I think, you know, this is, this is why we do it. This is why we do it. The, she's the next generation. She's the next wildcat, the next bulldog, the next Norwood Indian that's going to go through these halls and through these schools. And, and I just, the effort, I just know it's worth it. I know it's worth it. So that's all I have. And you'll hear more about the beautification of the outside of Williams here shortly. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Principal Miller. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we let them go and move on? 
I'd love to come in and do a tour and see the building. Please. That'd be yeah. awesome. Anytime. I'd love to see it. And we can have lunch. We did that when View got finished. We went there and oh. had lunch in the lunchroom at View when it got finished. So that would be a neat thing to come and see. Perfect. So I think what impressed me the most is the five stars on the gap closing. Yes. Especially coming off of, you know, the COVID years that we've had. Mm -hmm. So that's incredible work by the staff. Absolutely. All right, uh, we'll move on, 4.02, uh, Williams Avenue Elementary Beautification Plan. So this is a continuation from the teaser we got from Principal Bullard. And who's on the floor? It's Julie, but I brought up your uh, okay. picture for you. So remember we did a, um, we did a retreat where we talked about beautification plans, and there's a couple that we didn't do, so I think this is the finishing work of that. Finding a way to make it bigger. I know that's really, really small. It's not loaded in the board docs, is it? Because then we could look at it on here. It's not. No. no. Can you read it? Can you see it at all back there? I think we can get the idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's trees in the back. There are green trees like there. <laughs> all right. So we're going to talk about um, Williams first. We are coming to the end of our $41 million indoor renovation project. And we have about $1.6 million available to make upgrades with. Um, although this sounds like a huge amount of money, in the construction world, it's really not. Uh, however, this is just enough money for a beautification project at all buildings and to upgrade playgrounds at our elementaries. Tonight, we'll discuss Williams Elementary and Sharpsburg Primary. When I first met with architects about Williams, I said they would have a really hard time coming up with a plan at Williams uh, to be as special as the one at Sharpsburg Primary. Uh, at Williams, we have some real challenges. Um, the playground, as you know, currently is over here, and we have a drop-off zone there. And so when we were talking to them about it, we said, you know, we really can't build anything really nice in here as far as play structures or outdoor learning or anything like that because uh, we have a drop-off zone in that area. And in addition, we have a lot of back doors in this building. And part of our security uh, plan is to have all back doors covered by a gated, fenced area um, just for an extra layer of security. And so we gave them some pretty, um, pretty good obstacles to overcome. But our landscape architect came up with a really great idea, and I want to go over that with you today um, briefly. So security upgrades uh, include fencing from this point all the way over down to here and crossing over here and crossing mm -hmm. over right here. Um, will be uh, probably a 10-foot fence, um, and there will be secure gates right here, a man gate and a, a, a fire, uh, an emergency vehicle gate there, and the same thing down here too. Uh, the, only, the only doors uh, to inside that will not be protected are the front doors, which are you know, already double secure and manned by people, by staff members, and this one door that leads um, into the board office, which is protected, you cannot get anywhere near children um, from that board office entrance. So in our plan, the playground and the um, parking lot are switching places. So this will be a parking lot. We will be doubling our parking um, for staff and for parents. And this is going to really relieve a lot of that congestion up and down this area right here. Um, it is, It is really really clustered in here when uh, drop off and pickup is going on and um, a lot of parents still are not using the the drop off lanes um, which we will encourage when you know when we get this project all done but the new drop off lane 
we'll we'll go in the board office driveway right here and we'll circle around and come down come out the new entrance that we just installed into our playground which will now be our parking lot So by switching the playground to the back of the building, this allows our staff and our students to be safer. They're protected by you know, our three-story building. Um, when you go back there, it's a really quiet little private area. Uh, you cannot hear the road traffic. You can't, um, it's really secure. It's, it's really quite nice. When drop-off happens, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth here. When drop-off happens uh, through this, through this lane right here, P parents will drop off right, right here. And children will just come just this little distance right here until they go through the man gate. And then they'll have a little painted sidewalk that will walk into the back door of the building. So they will be within a secured area almost immediately upon drop off, um, which should make parents feel better. By having the parking lot over here, and drop off over here, that leaves this back area completely to be just a playground for our children. And um, it's going to be quite special. Real quick before I go into the playground, all these fencing around this area here will be removed. The barbed wire will come down. We will only have fencing right here and right here just to keep uh, the children from going into our neighbor's backyards, which probably would be frowned upon. Um, and so it won't be fenced off completely. Anybody that parks in that lot will be free to come and go uh, at whenever they need to. So starting off into the playground, you'll walk through this area right here. Um, there'll be a picnic area where these trees are, where there'll be um, tables for students to have quiet recess. Uh, there are some children that prefer to do um, drawing and things like that, rather than uh, than to do the more quiet or than to do the more active um, parts of the playground. Continuing on to nine here, you'll see this is um, a mounded area. There'll be uh, some hills here and some turf where children will be able to run up and down and and play King the Hill and all kinds of fun things on top of the the hills there and then right next to that we will have a double playground structure um, for them to run and jump on and have a great old time. Back here in the back of the building this is all dedicated to outdoor learning. This will have a fence on it, a, a decorative fence of, on it, around it to keep the children from it during recess just so our, our staff can see the entire area. Um, and so this will be just for instructional use, but um, it is um, going to be really special. The teachers are helping us come up with some really great ideas for science classrooms. There'll be some opportunities for children to dig in the dirt. There'll be uh, little garden areas and some science structures. There'll be some music, some music structures in here where the children can play on different kinds of keyboards and things like that that are water safe, rain safe, um, that would be really fun for them. <clears throat> Over on this side of the building, there's nothing there uh, except for just painted on the sidewalk activities. So this will be for free play, ball throwing, there's a, there's a um, kickball court right here, there'll be a basketball court right here. Outside this entrance right here, this uh, door right here, will have a playground for preschool. It'll be properly fenced uh, in, in an appropriate size, uh, size for our preschool, man to meet preschool mandates. In the front, uh, you'll notice there's a driveway here that we'll be taking out as it no longer meets code and um, we'll take out that driveway. We're gonna make this little area right in here a parent welcome area where parents um, that are coming to pick up their children can just kind of congregate in this area and wait. That'll keep them off the sidewalks here, which can be unsafe um, up against that road. That road traffic can be quite congested. We will also be adding sidewalks so that you can get from one end of the um, property to the other end. In the front, we're going to spruce up the landscaping with uh, low maintenance 
plant material, which will help improve the curb, the curb appeal of this uh, really great old building. You'll see also that we're doing curb appeal in front of or some uh, trees and plant material in front of the uh, um, parking lot also, and some trees in the back. So we're adding quite a bit of green space there. We're also hoping that staff will take advantage of this place in front here for like lunches. If the weather's nice, staff can have a place to go outside and relax for a few minutes um, during their, I know it's limited lunch time. And then finally, we will have some handicapped parking. There'll be some handicapped parking right here. Um, there'll be more handicapped parking right here. And then we anticipate that just a few spots right here will be handicapped parking. And we will have a, um, a little area here. There'll be a ramp probably where people can leave um, their cars in the parking lot, come directly into the board office during bad weather, um, get them directly in the building, and then they can travel over to the elementary school if they need to um, for work. I know I went through this kind of quick, but um, what kind of questions do we have on this, this playground? I think it's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a couple. Um, so if we do the ramp, that back stairwell, is there a chairlift to get them up to that first floor that's going to be installed? Because if they're coming off the parking lot in a wheelchair, they won't actually be able to get anywhere using that door. We talked about that, and I honestly can't remember what it was. I think, I think it still involves the garage from this area, okay, um, which I believe leads to the elevator. I think, but I can't. I can't remember. I apologize. Oh. Um, and then, of course, this handicapped parking would have to come all the way over to the ramp. So um, we're going to have to think some more about that. We'll get the architects involved in that, and see what else we can do to make it a little more convenient. My other question um, is also about accessibility on any of the playground equipment, is it possible to make sure at least one of the swings or slides uh, is handicap accessible? If we have a student that might need that uh, adaptive equipment, um, it's really easy for any child to play on adaptive equipment, but it's really hard for kids who can't play on regular equipment. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanna make sure that that's a resource that we have for all of our kids sure. uh, available. So this plan um, is still, uh, you know, the way we go through this project is is this will just be a rough draft. Um, we'll keep the spacing where everything is, but all the stuff in here can be switched out for even bigger and better things that we need to. But I mean, I like your point about handicap accessibility, and we certainly I have Amanda help me with that. So we can meet with architects and see what kind of um, equipment that we can come up that will fit all children's needs. And then my other question would be about the signage out on the road. I, I don't know if it's in the picture from here. I can't tell. Is the school sign out front somewhere? Mm -hmm. It is. We're, <laughs> uh, the plan is to keep the current sign and just to um, change out the plant material, make it look better, spruce it up okay. a bit. Looks awesome. I like moving the I've always had trouble parking over there. And with parents, at pickup has always been a challenge, so having a lot yeah, well, we had so much of our parking back here, um, and it just it's just not sufficient. And we just, I've heard so many stories of staff, you know, getting their mirrors taken off and their doors taken off and everything on the parking on the street that mm -hmm. I hope this is appreciated, that they'll have a safe place to park and an easy way to get into the building. Um, and then, you know, the security of the gate and the, and the, um, the locked gates and the fences just cannot be stressed enough. Just having all those back doors gated is um, truly a big plus. You know, believe it or not, the square footage of the parking lot area and the square footage of having the playground in the back is almost the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. It's just differently shaped. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. just a big square is much easier to park in mm -hmm. oh, yeah. than the little alleyways. Well, and we, we would have people get trapped, too. They couldn't leave certain times of the day because they had to block it off for mm -hmm. ingress and egress. So at least with this, parents can do pick up and drop off and leave, and teachers can leave, mm -hmm. too. They won't get stuck good back lunch. there. So, um, yeah. Do we know if um, morning drop off will be in the back then since the drop off thing, they go, the kids go to the back? or We, we have not. Um, or they'll not still gotten figure there it out. Yet. That's going to take a lot of work. Yeah. I was just thinking that. Uh, bef so we have this big initiative where we got all the front doors 
a double. Yeah. And double so it was secured. like an entry. And when that happened, um, so before that, everybody would walk their kids to the back to, of the school, and the kids would get in their lines, and then all go in, and the parents would have this chit chat, and they loved it. And then when it changed to the front door, they didn't feel like they had their chit chat time and space and they didn't they felt less connected to the school I heard it from a lot of people they're like I don't I don't have my thing anymore where I felt connected to the school well, now they can walk there with their coffee and chill right and I'm like ooh, yeah. a parent area what um, I'm like and I can't stop thinking about the people who told me I really miss the way it was I don't feel that I am I am uh, bonded to the school, you know, mm -hmm. like anymore because of it. And I'm like, <gasps> of course, you know, they're all people with kids my age, so we're all like, now we're finished at Williams, but <laughs> dang, but I can't wait to tell them. Regardless, they'll still be really happy about it. <laughs> um, and I know the future parents will. Ah, it's just so cool. I, can't I just it. I I wasn't even thinking about that. I mean, that's a great. Uh, great benefit. I was just trying to get everybody off the street where it was unsafe. So I'm, I'm glad <laughs> well, there's other double, benefits. double benefit because yeah. the parents love connecting to each other or seeing the teacher or seeing yeah. the principal and chit chatting if they have a question, da da da. And they feel connected to the school. And if we want our people to keep sending their kids to our school and to love our school, they have to feel connected. And that's going to make them feel connected. And I'm really excited. That's great. Both of our elementaries and we're trees. going to talk about tonight will have a parent welcome area. So that's ah, nice. so cute. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions or comments on on the playground? When were they looking or the to start it? By spring or over the summer? I I hope to have this um, on the agenda to be bid out in the January time frame. And then January, February, somewhere around there, and then um, construction can start in June, June-ish, the summer. Cool. Yeah. I actually had a parent ask me something. It was something like, "Are we losing our playground at Williams?" And I was like, "Whoa, what? No, what?" And then I said, "Oh, oh, maybe you heard about the outdoor improvements. Let me tell you about the outdoor improvements." Uh, Mrs. Cole actually brought that up uh, in one of our discussions because this playground is just so visible that people are going to miss it. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna worry that we don't have a playground for children <laughs> because you know it's not so visible anymore. But you know, we got them tucked away back here in the back where they're safer. Um, and, and there'll be know, more. We shade. just have to it was communicate so hot that on that mm -hmm. playground as well as views. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Huge expanse of black top with very little shade. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have some nice cutouts here with trees and then also, you know, the building shades it a lot. And then a lot of these property owners back here have trees also. <laughs> yes. So it'll be a lot a lot more of a natural area. But we we have to be very um, deliberate in our communications to the community that we have a playground for Williams <laughs> in the back. Because um, that will be something that people miss. Oh, I know during um, COVID, when my kid was online and her friends were at Williams, we would drive up to the edge of the playground and we knew what time they had recess so she could talk to her friends mm -hmm. <laughs> at recess. Yeah. Okay, any more comments or questions about Williams? Okay. See if I can find. Sharpsburg here. There we go. That one looks up maybe just a tiny bit bigger. Okay, so several years ago, Pastor Brian Ferry came to a board meeting and inquired into updating um, all parking and driveways for a seamless integration between the two churches and Sharpsburg Primary. And that plan is a result, or this plan is a result of that original discussion. This is, uh, this is the plan that we've been working on the longest. It's been several years 
Uh, and like I said, this is the plan that I've used for motivation for our architects, our landscape architects for the other playgrounds. Uh, and I continue, I will continue to use this plan for motivation um, just so that all of our elementaries have really special outdoor areas for our children. Um, as we look at the plan, I want to just go over just some of the unique things about this plan is it's the whole lot. So as you um, can see where it says additional parking, this is actually the church's uh, property. And so you'll see, um, let's see, I'm really, really bad with uh, road names. So I wrote this down and now I'm not going to be able to find it. Okay, so we will be able to go from Smith, I believe this is Washington, over oh, here. Oh, the first side street is Washington. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll, you know, there'll be access all the way across here for parishioners to be able to go through here, and then also from Washington or Smith to all, come all the way through the parking lot and go through to Forest, which will help, I think, um, will help with some of the traffic that we're seeing during dismissal and some of the traffic I'm sure that they're seeing on Sundays. <coughs> Again, fencing will be upgraded so that all of our back doors at Sharpsburg Primary, which I believe is just one, uh, will be uh, completely enclosed within a fenced gated area. There's the fence right here. It comes across over here, and it goes down here uh, along our parking lot, past the drop-off zone, and comes back to our building. So we'll have a gate here for, of course, vehicles, um, and a gate here for vehicles and the rest of the parking lot will be open. There'll be no fencing here, so it'll make it a lot uh, more easy for people to come and go as they need to for parking. But yet we'll keep our children secure in that playground area at all times. Uh, most of the time we dismiss right here, I think, um, for playground duty, so they'll be able to just run right on back there and get to recess. Does this still have a wavy wall? It does. Yes, I'll get to that. Um, so this playground area is, has been divided up into several different areas. This one right here is preschool. Again, it'll be in a small area as mandated by preschool guidelines and a small little play structure um, that will be perfect for that age group. This big gray area is a relocated um, structure from New City Presbyterian Church has been donated to the school. We will turn that into an outdoor learning environment. Um, again, teachers have been just really great about giving us some ideas for equipment and ideas that they have um, for learning supplies and different things that they can use that structure for, um, which will upgrade this into a really fun outdoor science and outdoor learning area. Classroom. Next to it in orange is another large playground structure where children will be able to um, run and play. And, um, I, we, we don't have this picked out yet, so I really don't know what it'll be, but we'll, we'll have people that help us pick out the right playground equipment um, for each site. To the right of the drop-off area right here, you'll see that we've added trees, so when parents pull in right here, they'll see a nice little... Um, just a, pretty little area um, to drive past. Again, this will be um, trees and green space, but it will be low maintenance. Uh, nothing that's gonna require a lot of work uh, on our staff. We just we don't have enough people to do that kind of thing. Between the church parking lot and the playground, you'll see um, the weighty line. That is a retaining seat wall. Uh, that is free form for the children's imagination and play. We anticipate they'll be running up and down here, dragging their wall, their hands uh, up and down that wavy line. And then above that wall is a um, an 11 there, if you can see that is more green space and trees that will shade the playground in the afternoon. So I think that'll be a big benefit for because this playground also is just a really hot area. There'll be dedicated walkways um, for pedestrians up here in the church area. Um, they've got it planned out really nice. And uh, when it comes to the school, we're kind of running out of room here. We won't be able to have a true sidewalk, but we will have a painted area 
on our um, asphalt that will indicate that it is um, for pedestrians only to get from one side of the block to the other block. The pedestrian, or I'm sorry, the parent waiting area is not drawn on this plan yet. As I said, these plans are open for change, but that will be right in this area here. We considered doing parking here, um, and we still may do some slight um, parking, maybe a few parking areas in here, but we anticipate that right here will be a parent welcome area. We can put a little green space there. Right now, parents kind of congregate right in here. This is usually where um, Norwood PD is um, to help control traffic and, and get the kids safely into our buildings. It's just very congested again. Um, so just by pulling the parents off of this area and getting them up in here, and getting the children up in here, it'll be much safer for both of them. Again, in front of the uh, primary, we'll spruce up the plant material. Uh, the landscape will look a, little, a lot better with some low maintenance plant material. And um, all of our upgraded green spaces will be low maintenance, but will improve the look of our outdoors to pair with our beautiful old building. So um, there, there's free, free play planned in here also. I didn't talk about it, but it looks like this is four square. Uh, looks like this, I can't even see it, uh, looks like this is basketball and a tetherball. Um, teacher input, a lot of kids don't play tetherball anymore, so I'm sure we'll be replacing that. This is all open to um, Maybe it's know, due for a comeback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's due for a comeback. No one saw Gaga Pit coming. No. <laughs> I had somebody ask me, what are those corrals in the, in the, um, <laughs> <laughs> the recess mm -hmm. areas, and I said, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. I think she called it something really weird, too, like cow corral or something, and I was like, what really are you talking kids. about? And I'm like, oh, it's a gaga pit. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. So there is still space, even though we've divided up this area pretty well, there is still is a space for running and playing um, on the playground. What kind of questions do we have about this plan? Or comments? Or? Hopscotch. Mm -hmm. They could do hopscotch instead of tether. Mm -hmm. It's an old game also. Folks at it's the a main classic. It doesn't have a ball use in this parking no. lot. So we have a spot for teachers for both buildings now. Currently, as it is, you know, we're, we're already using a lot of this parking that the churches have. I, um, when I was there, I parked up here all the time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, we'll continue to use this. It'll just be the accessibility will be so much easier because right now there's a big drop-off right here and you can't get from one side to the next. Um, so this will just make it a lot easier. It'll be all like one level or a, a nicer slant anyway um, so you can get around better. No, we appreciate all the um, assistance the churches give us with the parking. And um, on our agenda tonight um, for discussion is a parking agreement for the church. Um, uh, they're going through some, some remodeling and they need to have a um, parking agreement in place. So we're going to do that and then we'll turn around and I'm, I'm working on a parking agreement for us. Um, just, a, just something really simple that says we're allowed to park in their parking lots. And we just give the times. So like in our parking agreement for them, it's just, you know, during school hours, pretty much we need the parking um, on our lots. So um, that's for your consideration next week, too. Any other thoughts on playgrounds? So excited. I know. I said, you know, this is a nice break for me from... Uh, from finance <laughs> to talk about playgrounds. Do you have a committee at Sharpsburg that did it for you? Um, no, like I said, we've been working on that for so many years that we just, um, the church was just instrumental in helping design it from the very beginning. And then we just kind of started talking about it and um, we, we haven't, but you know, when we start deciding the finer details, of you know what what kind of playground equipment all that kind of stuff we certainly will get a committee together and get some input from teachers and the experts that know what we need 
Okay. I believe that was the last item in our discussion. Mm -hmm. It is. Section. So with that, we'll move on to Section 5, and that's the Education Committee Report. And I would like to turn the floor over to the member of this ballot. Thank you, Mr. President. I've got a couple of different items tonight. The first one is a uh, list of field trips under 5.01. You'll see nine different requests for field trips for just about all of our buildings, different grade levels, going to different places, and I absolutely love seeing all the places that we're allowed to go now that everything has lifted. Uh, 5.02 is our Talbert House MOU. This is our standard annual agreement that we put in place for mental health services, prevention services, and even a relationship that we have that supports seventh and eighth grade students in training to help identify their fellow students who may need assistance um, and how to direct them to Talbert House. So this is a standard thing that we do every year. Um, and then 5.03, um, we have a resolution to oppose House Bill 529. Um, and I would like to read that resolution if I may. Um, yeah, so I, I think there are some challenges with the wording of this resolution um, that we wanted to kind of talk about tonight to see how we, if we're okay with it or if we want to shore it up. Right. I think there's just one paragraph in there that we kind of worked on it a little bit. Maybe if you could just read that sure. um, part. Yeah, good for it. All right, so uh, the resolution to oppose the requirement to post school curricula online as proposed in House Bill 529 of the 134th General Assembly. Whereas under current law, school districts may provide parents with the opportunity to review the educational materials that will be included in their children's curriculum pursuant to Ohio Revised Code ORC Section 3313.212. Whereas House Bill 529 has been introduced to the House of Representatives of the 134th Ohio General Assembly and requires the curricula and other instructional materials used in each classroom or course to be posted to the school's district website in the summer before the start of the school year. Whereas the requirements proposed in House Bill 529 are unnecessary and would place an undue burden on school systems that are already experiencing staffing and resource shortages. Education professionals need to be flexible and able to adjust their instruction over the course of the year based on student achievement. In addition, this requirement would rule out all current event discussions discussions and new theories learned in professional development would be stifled due to time requirements of the syllabus and creativity and innovation during the school year would be unduly hampered. In effect, this law would create stagnant curriculum. Um, and then it just lists that we would agree that this would be something that the board is opposed to. Um, unless the wording is further down. No, nope. nope, that was it. That was it. That's what I thought. Um, I think that's a lot better than the first draft version that I saw. And we can tweak it again, too, before we pass it next week. If you have ideas, just shoot them to us. Okay. Does anybody have any issues with how that reads? Um, I don't like the and, and. That's usually redundant for and creativity and innovation. Um, I would try to think of a way. It just felt like a very large sentence. It was hard to read it. Um, let's see, based on student achievement. In addition, this requirement would rule out current discussions, call me series on international development. Um, I would make the, in addition, this requirement would rule out all current event discussions, period. All new theories learned in professional development would be stifled due to time requirements of the syllabus, period. Creativity and innovation during this school year would be unduly hampered. Make it three sentences. It will read more smoothly. Trying to piece them together felt uh, awkward. Makes it emphasize more too. Exactly. Because I completely agree with all of those points and I want to make sure they don't get lost when someone's trying to read it. Because we have at least five laws currently on the books that allow parents access at any time to curriculum. If they have questions, they can reach out to our curriculum director, their teachers. There is absolutely no reason for this house bill to exist other than to hamper teachers and give them one more thing to do. And we don't, I, I don't want them to do that. I don't think they want to do that. Um, and I want to get this 
up there as quickly as possible. Yeah, for me, it's it's not so much about giving them one more thing to do as it, it it's we state it perfectly here. It's going to stagnate the curriculum. Like once you post that online, yep. right? You can't change it. And if you change it, and then you have a parent that comes, you know, three or four months later and says, "Wait a minute, I was on your website back in June, and I saw that on February 3rd you were supposed to be doing this." Right. And there is a provision little, that allows Jimmy. for changes, but it has to be done, I think, with at least 60 or 30 days notice if you want to make a change, Holy which moly. is still <laughs> terrible. If you have the a, environment of the classrooms change exactly. from, from to minute to minute. Exactly. So, <laughs> so their, their change allotment is absolute yeah. Holy BS. Um, you can't make a change a month out and think that's going to work. So then what we're going to do as a district is we're going to turn around and we're going to spend resources, you know, administratively defending the teachers being able to educate properly, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's just a, a, it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money. Yeah. It's bad legislation. Um, if this goes sure. to the floor, I would also like to put in that I'm more than happy to go up and speak. I know you've done that in the past as well. Yeah. Um, it's a good time. I, I would definitely go there and speak against this. Dude, I would go with you. Because for me, it's about how our state legislation goes out of their way to try to sabotage us. And this is just another one. And we're calling them out on, you're just making frivolous stuff to sabotage public schools. And we know it. And we're sick of it. Well, Alice, you also worked as a sub. <laughs> I'm wondering how this type of requirement would affect subs because right? a lot of times subs come in and have backup. You, you have right, backup we have to have backups to the backups to because sometimes. Uh, so how do you predict that? Oh, where are you going to be the when I happen aren't to get there, sick? The Let me see. <laughs> um, so you know, how is this law going to balance against our subs and their requirements in the classroom as well? Um, so you're you're taking a tool away from our substitute teachers that we so desperately need to keep. Um, so, um, so if that language change of those sentences is acceptable, we can put it on for next week. I'm in agreement with those changes. Mm -hmm. I wish we could say out now. We know what you're doing, and just um, we're just sick of it, and you're and you're just you're just creating flim flam so that we jump. <laughs> Um, if that is acceptable, then that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move on to section six on our agenda personnel, superintendent recommendations. Superintendent Raymond. Thank you, President Atwood. 6.01 oh, uh, is uh, retirement, and we do want to uh, congratulate Virginia Ginger Hall. She is um, retiring, and it's a great loss to our district. She was a fabulous um, ESL teacher. Under employment, we have under supplementals, a number of individuals doing bowling and drama. And the last two on that uh, list, Kate and Melissa, are also uh, mentors. They're teacher mentors in number one. Number two, Avenues for Success, our after school program is up and running. And as you can see, there are a multiple um, a multitude of staff members who have volunteered to run a clubs in the after school program. So that's what we're approving. Number three is a classified sub. We'd like to welcome um, Anton. This is always wonderful to have um, a sub when we need it. And number four, as you can see, these uh, we have moved into winter sports. So these are the pupil activity contracts for our coaches for all of our winter spo uh, sports programs. And that Indeed, that number four, that concludes my report. Anybody with any questions or discussion on any of the superintendent recommendations? Okay. We'll move on to section seven. It's the policy committee, and I'd like to turn the floor over to Vice President Cole. Thank you, Mr. Atwood. This month we have the second reading of the policies that were uh, discussed in September. Um, so we have IGCH-R, uh, which is also LEC-R, IGDJ, and IGDK. So this is um, this just states that the OSBA is going to follow the OHSAA guidelines. 
Um, we have KGB, um, which is talking about um, it, this list additional substances prohibited on school property, and this also uh, cites a legal uh, reference to a city ordinance. Um, we have GBP, uh, and this um, is a legal reference change or a legal uh, legal reference about a drug-free workplace. GBH, which is also JM, and uh, this is the student staff relations. So this is um, talking about the teachers and staff using a um, district provided communication rather than their personal cell phone. So they'll be, uh, I think a lot of them is, are gonna use that, um, that Remind app to where they can communicate with students and parents without giving their personal numbers. So that concludes my report. All right, any questions or discussion about any of these items? This will be the second reading and adoption of these policy changes this month. No? All right, we're going to move on to section eight in our agenda, the building and grounds committee report. I'd like to turn the floor over to board member Mrs. Rarica. Okay, we have seven requests. First, the Nord Christmas Town that happens on the first Friday in December. Uh, the Norwood Business and Professional Women's Club puts that on. Um, and they need it Friday and Saturday. Friday to set up and all day Saturday. Um, also, we have two <coughs> soccer academies at Shea Stadium, uh, one for tryouts, one for practices and games. Um, a Girl Scout troop would like to use Sharpsburg uh, Cafeteria for the monthly meeting. Seven Hills S Swim Team would like to use our pool for practice. Uh, Norwood Rec would like to use the Williams Gym for youth basketball practices. And Norwood Recreation would like to use the Middle School Field House for youth basketball games. I have one discussion point. Yes, so let's get to the discussion yeah. part. And this is Erica, good work. So the Christmas Town has always had um, alcohol sales at Christmas Town on city property, not school property. But, I, and, and then though, I think for years it was like in a tent and it was just stay in the tent. And now they use the um, orange flexible plastic stuff to make a fence and like stay here. Um, so they are going to ask for, they have not gotten it yet. They also, they have their liquor license already. They have a liquor license. Um, but they are going to ask for a Dora so that they would like, so you know, um, Section and Elm are closed off. So that on Section and Elm, including the two city parking lots that are connected to our school parking lot, would be included in the Dora so that uh, the people could carry their beers around those places. Mm -hmm. So we are have a no alcohol on school grounds or, and the um, state and city policy says unless there is a liquor license right so they do and if the, if they get this dora we need to think do we want them to continue being very careful about uh which they always have don't go on the school parking lot with your beer or in the field house. So they use the field house and the school parking lot, right? Or we could say, oh, we'll have a vote on this and um, we can suspend the policy for this event um, and they could, um, if someone were in, to carry their beer over the school parking lot, it would not be a violation. So the example would be that um, CPS does that. So they vote and they say, okay, alcohol at this event. So uh, the symphony uses SCPA for the symphony and um, they sell wine in the school even. And I've had that wine in that school at the symphony. Uh, so <laughs> not that that matters. You said section. Did they move it? I thought it was or, here. Right, right here. What is this? Oh, the station. 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 station starts with the same letter and I ends with a sure shun. I wanted to make sure I didn't know if they were moving the event. Stay sec. 
<laughs> okay, so it's still Station. the same spot. This road right here, <laughs> in front of our parking lot, with the two city parking lots on it. Um, we could also discuss if uh, people were allowed to walk into the field house with their beer. Uh, or we can say, no, don't do that. Or, no, don't, don't let them walk in the parking lot. Um, I know it might still happen, though they put up fence and they put signs everywhere, like, this is where you can have your beer, uh, is what they currently do. But we can... Um, Make it so for that event, they can walk freely about the parking lot. If we want. We don't have to. It would be okay in the parking lot. I don't think bringing it in the building, because I wouldn't want to clean that up off the floor either if they spill it all over our basketball. So I made sure to call the, uh, one of the ladies in charge of the committee and asked her all this today. And she said they already sell food, beverages, and... Uh, food in the field house during Christmas town. So if there was a spillage, I mean, they might spill cider or coffee in there too. But we might just not want it just on principle that we're like, we're a school and we just don't do that. You know, just things to think about. Yeah, so I, does anybody else have any thoughts about this before? I do. I think it opens up an opportunity for other, you know, as, as much as I would love to sell beer at Little Indians events. Right. If, if they keep uh, it in a tent at a marked area. Yeah. Which is what they've done they've since 2009. Done, then I would say keep with it. It's worked. Yeah. Or 11. It's worked or whenever this started. And, yeah. if, and if they need to extend their little you know, beer garden area, but it's, it's marked. Because, yeah, I think you know, last year it had a little right. outdoor space yeah. in front of the tent. Then I would say that's that's established, people are used to it, and it keeps it off the school property. Of course they might get it, so the, but the dealio this year, the difference is they're, they're gonna ask for a Dora, uh, which means it's gonna be a big space now yeah. where people are gonna be walking about. It's my understanding that a public school can't be listed in a Dora. Right, like they could have it on the street, Right. but they couldn't bring it over here. The Dora doesn't extend to us. Correct. So we, but we could say, oh, we could include our parking lot since it's like city parking lot, our parking lot, city parking lot, and these streets completely surrounding our parking lot. That will be the area. But we don't have to either. Yeah. I'm, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm not in favor of allowing that on school property. Right. I mean, we, I mean, we, Go through a lot of we go through a lot of policy just to make sure that we have a drug-free workplace and a drug-free environment. Um, whether that's, policy this month. We have just a policy. Subject. We have a policy change. And right, right. Change. Which is why I was like, they said it in the meeting. I was like, let me ask them about this. Um, and they're, they're very prepared to not let anyone on the price line because that's what they've always done. Yeah. And I said, we got a policy on there. Let me ask them. Maybe they can make that whole entire front city parking lot a designated area. And that way they oh, have a whole big it will spot. Be, yeah. I mean, if it's the tent. door, it will be in it and right. the other city parking lot and the street and the sidewalk. But that's going to be really hard to police it to make sure people aren't walking through the parking lot with their beers because they're going to be like, well, I'm just going over there and they're going to walk through us. They're not going to walk out to the street and then around. So I feel That's like why I was like, it, well, maybe it would be easier to just say, okay, this event, the parking lot's there. It's in the middle of everything. Yeah, I would just give them. I don't, I don't even know how Adora would work <coughs> being so close to a public school property. I don't know. I mean, because if you look at other doors that are out there, um, they're, they're never adjacent to a school. They're usually by restaurants and bars. Right. Right. Um, Unless there's a school. Right? Mainstrauss does it. Uh, the Germantown up in Dayton does it. They close the street after 4 p.m. Like it's, mm -hmm. but that's a district for that. Correct. And the whole city is involved. 
we would have people on property just blatantly ignoring it because they would think, oh, I'm out here and I need to go over there and I'm... I, I don't want to walk around on the sidewalk. I'm exactly. just going to cut diagonally through the parking lot. So I would right. keep it in so one So that's when lot. they might do that anyway. Right. Even though the women's club does their due diligence of putting up a fence and making the signs. Well, so I, I think... I think because of the fact of where they're hosting the event, right next to this property, I don't, I'm not so sure that they're going to get the door. I mean, we don't know. But, but we, they would have to be fully responsible. The for mayor so far is like thinks it's a really cool idea. Property. Oh, I, I, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's involved in it, though. I just don't see. But I think we should be clear to them about what we want. I don't see your ladies stepping in to. Okay, you need to go that way. Nope, go that way. Nope, go that way. Oh, yeah. The no. whole day. <laughs> they will put up a fence and they will put up signs. Well, Sue, Sue is pretty. She, she might go around telling them. I don't know. It might just be And I'll be sitting with keep it. handing people bags of sand with candles. Right. So, so, that, so if oh, they don't get their Stay door, over here. Stay then, over it's, here. It's going to be the tent with, with the little fencing around it. And which it has, up, which so it has so been since 2011. Within yeah. this area. Mm -hmm. On city property. On city property. Yeah. So like they said, have always avoided the school property the, for take that. Take over that whole front city parking lot and make that a drinking area. That might area. have been it last year. Like uh, just no. vendors down there. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying make that whole thing. If you want to expand it, just take over that one parking lot and be like, now instead of just here, you've got here, and a couple vendors could set up in that area if they wanted to. But it's only within I'm not that sure where they fenced in area. Had the idea of putting it this year because I'm I'm not in charge of Christmas Town. I just attend the meetings and listen to them. And say, I can help you here. I can help you there. Gotcha. But, well, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens when they get their door. But, um, yeah. So well, yeah. And forewarning, they're asking for a door, so we might need to think more. But does that mean that they're going to ignore the school's request to stay no! on the property? They, if they no, get a door they've out? always, they've been doing this since 2011. Right. And they have always kept it off school property. And the firemen, mm -hmm. the firemen sell mm -hmm. it. Sure. So they're and, involved. Yeah, and Mr. Peter, who's here, he helps them organize and knows where things go. So he works with them. So. I'm just thinking if they get the door up. How are they going to compensate? That's something they'll have to think of. How will they make sure That's that people That's why I told them that don't... I would ask. I'm like, that sounds complicated. Let me ask. Yeah. Good deal. Well, I'm a big supporter and a big fan of Christmas Town. So. Oh, absolutely. We've been involved since the Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions, comments, any of uh, about the other uh, facility requests. Everything else is pretty much standard. It happens every year. I know Seven Hills has used our pool for, I don't know, six, seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, and then recreation using the elementary schools for practice and the field house for the games. That's, all. That's been eons. That's been eons. <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to move on to section seven. Oh, no. I'm section sorry. nine. 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 Got to flip the page. Uh, section 9 in our agenda, and that's the Finance Committee report, and I'd like to turn the floor over to the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. President. And on the agenda uh, 9.01, we have the CFO report and all the other financial reports attached for your review, as well as the change order listings for our construction project. Um, 9.02, appropriation resolution uh, for the our current budget for the year. 9.03, change of account name. There are funds left over in the Williams 100 year celebration that will now be dedicated to student field trips. I think that's about 10 years old. The money's just been sitting there. Uh, the name of the account will also change to Williams student field trip account. 9.04, North Norwood parapet wall substantial completion. This document marks the end of the parapet wall renovations at North Norwood. 9.05, parking lot agreement for Sharpsburg Primary. This agreement allows the New City Presbyterian Church to use the Sharpsburg Primary lot for church parking except for Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
eventually we will have an agreement in place to use New City's lot and the Springdale Nazarene Church lots also for parking during this school day. 9.06 resolution declaring urgent necessity. This is on our future architect contract. In accordance with ORC 153.71, school districts must take bids on architect services if they expect those services will exceed 25000 Our future construction needs um, include new roofs at Williams and View Elementaries, Shea Stadium renovations and upgrades, all elementary playground upgrades, and the beautification of the front of all of our building's grounds. Because the district plans to use ESSER funds and bond funds for some parts of the projects which have strict spending guidelines, deadlines, excuse me, the board should consider issuing a resolution of urgent necessity to bypass the RFQ process. Already as it stands, future construction will almost certainly be delayed due to supply chain issues which will further, further aggravate our ability to achieve our spending deadlines. All bidding requirements and federal procurement guidelines will be followed for the actual construction project. Um, this resolution declaring urgent necessity would be just for the architect uh, contract and architect services. 9.07, professional development. Ms. Fowler would like to attend the OSBA Southwest Fall Conference on uh, October 13th. That's open to anybody who would like to attend. Alice went with me last time. So if anyone's available oh. on Thursday and wants to go. Is this Thursday? Oh, yeah. It's, it's this Thursday, yeah. And it's that dinner? We, it was supposed to go on last month's, but I had mentioned it before. Um, but it's, it's the same dinner that we had before. It's up at Greene County Career Center. So it's a little bit of a drive, but if anybody wants to go, so it's it'll open be in to Dayton. all of us. Is that Greene County It's more Zenia, isn't Greene County isn't Career it? Center is up near Zenia. Zenia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a drive. <laughs> 9.08 donation, a donation for 59 shares valued at $20,788. And I think that's from a company named Ora. 9.09 .09, Norwood Ready, Ready Kit agreements. Tonight we have three Norwood Ready Kit agreements for the school year. We continue to work with Best Point. Every Child Succeeds in 4C for Children's to provide early education opportunities for 0 to 5 year old children and families in Norwood. We are entering our seventh year of NRK Collaborative and would like to express our gratitude to our donors that make this possible, which are Shepherd Chemical, Keitel, Keitel Plumbing, and School Outfitters. And that is all I have for finance. Does anybody have any questions on the finance items presented to us? So I, I just want to make one statement. Um, regarding 9.06. So the resolution declaring an urgent necessity, um, this is something that is rarely used. I went back and looked. In the five years that I've been on this board, we've only done it once. <coughs> so it's not, it's, we take very seriously adhering to the bidding requirements set by the state. Um, it's only because of the timing of making sure that this architect work is done so that a way we can go out and get proper bids for the actual work knowing that there's going to be delays due to supply chain issues i mean we're just we're planning for the worst case right mm -hmm. plan for the worst you hope for the best you meet somewhere in the middle and everybody's satisfied so With that, uh, no other discussion. We'll move on to section 10, and that's adjournment. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Have a nice night. <laughs>